G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to be having a look at a plane that is at a lower battle rating than its supposed competition, because statistics. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who have not been following the War Thunder scene for a long time, Gaijin uses a uh, sort of roundabout way to balance their vehicles by means of statistics. They take the average player's battle, maybe its kills, its deaths, wins, losses, those things like that, and basically determines whether or not this plane should go to a higher or lower battle rating. And you might think, well, overall that's not so bad, but when it comes to top tier there are a couple of little flaws with that, and the reason why the MiG-21 SMT is uh, supposedly in Gaijin's eyes so bad is because it sees top tier. Yeah, it, it sounds like a pretty pathetic idea, but when you have a look at the way that Gaijin balances things, it tends to leave out a couple of key details that numbers don't really pick up. It's sort of the, almost the feel of the plane. There are a couple of different things that uh, I guess play into account that numbers don't tell the full story, or at least you don't have enough numbers in your, al in your algorithm or in your uh, statistics or in your whatever you want to call it to basically ascertain a proper value. Now the MiG-21 SMT, which is the one that we're going to be having a look at today, because the MF is in the exact same position, in fact the only real difference between the MF and the SMT is that one has fuel on top and the other one is, uh, I, I think there might be some, some slightly different uh, engine layout or some other very very minor detail, but functionally in War Thunder they are exactly the same plane except the SMT is a touch heavier. That's pretty much it. Uh, and the SMT, of course, carries R3Rs, which are the radar-guided version of the R3S. The R3S is the uh, equivalent to the AIM-9, and it is a fairly basic sidewinder, um, but the R3R has that radar capability and therefore all aspect. But as we all know, for those of you who have been watching the channel for a long time, you'll know that radar-guided missiles are only as good as the radar that they're attached to. So, uh, Pulse Doppler moment, for example. The Pulse Doppler radar on the FGR-2 makes the AIM-7s a lot more viable than something like the F-4C, for example, or the F-4E even. The radar is just a lot stronger on that plane, and therefore the radar missiles are better, but to be honest, the R3Rs don't make that much of a difference. We're going to get straight into the battle here. The F4E looks pretty juicy. He's going for the head-on. Nah, not taking that. Not against an F4E. And of course, we are in a full up tier. I'm going to go for this F4E here, just looking for targets of opportunity. And as I swing around, I'm taking a look at the battlefield. I'm having a look at where I'm positioning myself relative to the enemy fighters. And just as I do that, a couple of planes appear within view. It looks like they're not going to be a threat to me directly, and so I engage the F4E with a nice little R60. Hopefully that's going to make its mark. Prepping the next one because the R60s have a long prep time. Go for the Mirage. The Mirage is both slow, low, and also quite a large threat with those uh, Matra Magics. And of course the F104 happens to present itself as a good target, so I'm going to go straight with that one. Just as the Mirage 3C comes into view, but because he's heading in a straight line, I'm able to turn around and engage him straight away. If he wasn't, I would just continue in a straight line, and hopefully the speed differential in that 180 degree turn that the Mirage would theoretically have to take would potentially give me a uh, net speed advantage. So, I've used my last R60 on that F104, and hopefully it strikes home. Going to go for a quick head on here with the F5E, but no dice, and uh, I don't think we're going to get much dice with the F104's R60. The... Uh, Remaining targets here are pretty much F5s, and the F5s are quite deadly. You have to be careful when you engage with these. You can't just go into a rate fight and hope to uh, basically come out on top, because you're not. The R60, sorry, the uh, SMT and uh, its friendly R60s are not going to be enough to stave off the F5. It just has that ability to rate fight, and so what you need to do is be in a basically 2v1. You need to outnumber the F5s, or alternatively, be in a position where you are able to out-energy them and out-accelerate them. Uh, because, frankly, that's the only time I really see you getting out of the way of an F5. These things are quite powerful, but they do lack that uh, top-end speed and I think a little bit of acceleration. I'm not quite sure, but uh, anyway, we're going to go for a quick head-on here with the F5. A bit late, but it does prove effective. Very risky, but uh, it, it paid off in the end, so I'm going to take it. And, of course, we get some nice little hits to finish off the F5E here, who's gone into a flat spin which uh, will be a nice little kill in the end for me, potentially. So, this plane, clearly performing quite well, even in a uh, 
fairly disadvantageous situation. You think about the enemies that it is facing, the SMT, and you've got stuff like the F5E. The F5E is actually pretty dangerous when it comes to facing this thing. You don't want to be on the pointy end of an F5. You've got 9Js to worry about. You've also got uh, the guns and the performance of that thing. And of course, when you do get on the offensive against an F5E, you basically have to be either just killing a distracted one or you have to be going guns because the R60s will eat up flares like you wouldn't believe and uh, that's really really unfortunate for anything wielding R60s. Not only that but the F5E has a lot of flares on hand, not as much as the F4 but certainly enough to basically get rid of all R4 R60s if it's done properly if they're done carefully. That's one of the real issues you have with the SMT and that's probably one of the reasons why uh, it has less of an efficacy at those higher BRs. Because it doesn't have flares and chaff, it just doesn't have that ability to also stave off things like 9Js and uh, you know all the likes, 9Gs, etc, etc. But it's not a bad plane. You might be thinking that this plane might be suffering a little bit, and sure, stock it probably is, with the R3Ss, uh, and there goes that F4E giving me kill number 4, quite nice. But uh, honestly, this plane performs quite well for a not top dog. You don't expect, as a 10.7, to be performing perfectly against a 10, uh, an 11.0. The 11.0s are at higher battle rating for a very good reason. They're the top dog, and they're meant to be the top dog. And that's why they have maybe the higher repair cost. That's why they have that higher battle rating, because they have more stuff. And I think what Gaijin has done here is they have gone, well, higher battle rating, but better statistics, worse statistics, etc., etc., and uh, just taking it as is, thinking that, well, if this plane is performing worse, it's not because it's constantly getting upteared against planes that are better than it, it must be for some other reason, which is, of course, incorrect. So, for me, it feels like Gaijin is basically doing some weird sort of not calculations, but they're not taking into account the planes up-tiering and down-tiering, because if you think about it, this plane at uh, 10.7 is going to be up tiered more than it is down tiered. There are going to be more 11.0s, and of course, uh, at 11.0, you can only see the down tiers. So, planes that are facing 11.0s can only see up tiers, if that makes sense. Or they will more regularly see up tiers than they do down tiers, which is bad for them. But that's kind of just how it goes. Back in the day when 8.0 was top tier for uh, for tanks. You always used to see those 7.7s getting up tiered. You always used to see it. The IS uh, 4M always up tiered. The mouse always up tiered. And then they decided to nuke the mouse because Germany. But I don't really know. It's it's a complicated story, and I don't really have the the desire to get into it. But uh, this plane is pretty much fine at a 10.7 battle rating. It shouldn't be expected to be performing at a high level when it's in a full up tier. It should be barely average and that's kind of good that's good that's exactly where you want a plane to sit roughly in the middle and that's kind of the way that this plane performs obviously different to be stock and spaded but of course when you think about it if this plane is constantly getting down tiered which in this case here on screen as you can see it it is f86 f40 that's not a fair match that's where Gaijin is starting to get this thing wrong. It's it's not a fair match for the F40, it's not a fair match even for the Harriers to come against this thing regularly, game after game. And this is what I mean by Gaijin balancing from the top down. They look at the planes at 11.0 and they see them clubbing the 10.7s and they go, well, something's wrong here, we need to change it. And so they take the 10.7s, move them to 10.3, and now the 10.3s are going down to 9.3 and clubbing the shit out of the 9.3s. And for me, that's where we have a massive problem. Because what you're starting to do is you're starting to compress the battle ratings, and you're starting to begin that process of compression that we always, always beg for the reversal of. And the reversal comes from, or the, the need for the reversal comes from this type of thing. Where you have constant compression, obviously there's going to be a pushback for decompression. And that's kind of right, that's kind of the way it should be, because in the case of the SMT, it does not belong at a battle rating where it faces subsonics that only hit 1100 kilometers per hour at sea level. For me, that's completely wrong. That's just a poor way to balance things. I mean, if you take this Harrier here, he's a 9.3, he's now a 9.7, but 
that plane is one of those planes that doesn't really stand a chance against the SMT. However, at a full up tier, I think that one might be acceptable because AIM 9Gs, basically. But you're not giving AIM 9Gs to the F 40 Sabre. The F 40 Sabre is sitting there struggling. Like, it, it, I mean, I guess it rightly should if it's facing planes like that. But in a full up tier, there's a difference between, I would say, a fair up tier and an unfair up tier. A fair up tier would be the Harrier, for example. It's got a good climb rate, it tops out at, I think it's 1200 or close to that at uh, roughly sea level. It's got decent weaponry, it's got the ability to reverse thrust uh, and, and hover, and it's okay. Its maneuverability is okay, but it gets that airspawn, which means that it is fairly decent. On top of that, it is actually an attacker, so it's not in that realm where it should be dealing massive amounts of damage. It's in that realm where it should be attacking ground targets, pretty much. There are, you know, a limit to four in a team. But here's my here's my crux of my, my argument. If you're going to be balancing from down, or from, from up, or bottom down, or top down, sorry, you're going to have problems where you start forcing these types of planes into a lower and lower BR. It's happened already with the Lightning. It's happened already with the PFM. It's happened already with the MiG-21F. And it's just going to get worse, which makes me really upset. It's going to compress and squeeze and ruin these lower battle ratings, which is really, really crap for the people that are down there at the moment or who enjoy that type of combat. If you enjoyed... MiG-15 uh, MiG BIS versus F-2 Sabre, or if you enjoyed MiG-17 and uh, Swift F-7 and all of those planes, well, you can just kiss them goodbye, because they're just not viable at the moment. And they're not viable because Gaijin has compressed the matchmaker. Think about the planes that you face now when you play the Swift F-7. You face MiG-19s, you face things like the uh, MiG-21s, you're facing Harriers, you're facing other jets that are just so damn powerful that it has pushed the Swift, pushed the MiG-15, pushed the MiG-17, pushed the F-2 Sabre out of fashion, and it has just completely destroyed them in the matchmaker. There's no room for these planes anymore, because there's just no spot for them to be competitive. And that sucks. That's already happened with a couple of these battle ratings. It's happened with 8.3. Think about the LA-15. Think about the Yak-38 and the Yak-23s. These planes are no longer viable because the matchmaker has just been squeezed down so damn hard that the bottom tier planes, the planes that weren't quite as competitive as the other ones at that battle rating have now been forced out of the matchmaker. So the only planes that were viable were things like the uh, F9, F8, but that too has been squeezed out with a 9.3 battle rating squeeze. And it sucks for these planes. These planes used to have a vibrant matchmaker, and the things that are driving it are Gaijin's statistics. For me, this has just come out so wrong. It's just come out so pear-shaped that it just, to me, doesn't really make any sense, and to me, sounds like a poor method of balancing. The way I would see Gaijin doing this better in the future would be to have a look at their battle ratings, and instead of down-tiering the plane that is short on statistics or has poor outcomes, it should be looking at that matchmaker with a little bit more depth and nuance. It should be looking at that matchmaker and going, well, if this plane is performing poorly, let's have a proper investigation and figure out why. Let's have a look at the plane. Is it just because it's bad stock? Did it get a nerf recently? Did it have something else happen to it? Did a new plane in the matchmaker get introduced, which has just completely thrown it out of fashion? This happens all the time. It is, has it been power crept? And then you look at that and say, well, if this plane has been power crept by another plane, then the other plane is the problem and not plane A. And what's happened with Guardian is they've taken it in reverse. They've looked at this plane and decided to down tier it. And now it just sits and clubs sabers all day. For me, this is a poor outcome. This is a very poor outcome. And I would love to see this happen in reverse, where instead of the MiG-21 SMT being down-tiered, perhaps you might want to up-tier the MiG-23 and the F-5. Or alternatively, you might want to understand that 10.7 is meant to be the shit BR. 10.7 is meant to be the BR where planes get clubbed, and so is 10.3, and even to some extent 10.0. But 
these planes are not bad because they need to be down tiered. They're in the wrong matchmaker. They're bad planes, or they're performing poorly because they're inherently, due to the matchmaker and the way it works, are just not in a good spot at the moment. And when time comes and new planes come and replace the top tier ones and the battle ratings go to 11.7, 12.0, then only, and only then you will get a little bit of breathing room and a little bit of up tier and down tier. That's the way BRs work. And it seems like in the eight years that War Thunder's been around, Gaijin doesn't really have that sort of down pat. They don't understand it, maybe. Maybe it hasn't been pointed out. Maybe they refuse to see it. But either way, that's the way I've seen things over the past eight years. And I guess I might not, might not have a game design degree or I might not have a formal education in some sort of video games. But I think the experience that I've had and my time as a content creator should at least speak some volumes as to the way I see the game and the way that the direction of the game should travel. Of course, I speak for the player. I don't speak for Gaijin, and Gaijin might have a vested financial interest in that. Of course, I don't really see how or why, but there could be one there uh, that I'm just not seeing. And sure, if you want to pursue a financial interest instead of your, your game, then I guess then that's the way for your game to die. But I don't really see Gaijin doing that here. I don't understand why Gaijin would be looking at this from a bottom-up, uh, from a top-down perspective, and not a bottom-up perspective. The SMT here, whilst it is clubbing A7Ds as you can see on screen, it's not an entirely bad thing. The A7D is a 10.7, uh, 10.0, and the MiG-21 SMT should be 10.7. The MiG-21 SMT is a fighter, and the A7D is a ground attacker. Not only that, I'm pretty sure this A7D is stuffed up somewhere. I'm not really sure how I managed to sit on his uh, on his tail, pretty much. But uh, the A7D also comes with a couple of neat little things. You know, it's not completely helpless, but at least that plane there has that opportunity to go and see this thing and not just die in a hole, like the F-40 Sabre. There are other planes in this game that will get fully down-tiered, or fully up-tiered, and just literally stand zero chance. Things like the Yak-30, the LA-15. At 9.0, who are they going to see? They're going to see their, their old friends, and they're going to get slaughtered. They're going to see the F-11. <laughs> Good luck. And all the 8.7s are just so much wildly better than any of the 8.0s or 8.3s. There's just such a gap, and that has come from battle rating compression due to the reliance on statistics. For me, that's really sad. And you know what? Whilst I feel zero shame in clubbing A7Ds, I do feel sad for things like the F40s, things like the other 9.3s. The Shenyang F5 does not stand a chance because it just does not have the capability to withstand things like a MiG-21. For me, it is one of the tragedies of War Thunder. But at the same time, it's not the end of the world. It is a learning point for Gaijin. And it is something that I think we should all talk about and we should all sort of put out there a little bit. Statistics, most of the time, it's okay. And then the way you interpret it does change the way that you the, the way that it's perceived, I suppose. A lot of people see statistics as the end of the world, and in some cases when you use statistics for reasons and then don't think about the use of case, or you just misinterpret them, or you don't look further into them, that's when you start to have problems. And that's when they start to look bad, especially on Gaijin part. For me, if this plane is performing poorly, then sure. Maybe you could do something about it, but it shouldn't be battle rating, and it shouldn't be lowered, or it could be something different, you know, like flares. In the new patch, this plane is getting flares, which for some reason has come way too late, uh, but it's getting flares nonetheless, and that's something to be taken into consideration. Is it a viable 10.3 with flares, radar, radar warning receivers, radar missiles, uh, high speed, afterburner, and R60s. Is it a viable 10.7? I think it's a viable 10.7. I think it's highly unsuitable with all of those little little things. I think it's highly unsuitable for 10.3 because then as a 9.3 with IR missiles now even if you're super slow you don't really stand a chance. You have to use your guns 
and you're probably not going to have great guns at that. You can't really use your performance, you can't use flares and radar because you don't have any, and of course, you're not supersonic, so you're never going to catch them. So what are you going to do? You basically have to sit around and wait until they make a mistake that is so blatantly critical that it just throws the whole plane away. If I were in this fight, again, and I wanted to throw my plane away, all I would have to do is sit in front of this guy. I, I would have to mess up this fight so badly that it would just be... I might as well J out, if that's the case. And to have a plane that is so far ahead in performance against a plane that is so far behind like that, you have to get something colossally wrong. And for me, I think that's the interpretation of the statistics. For me, I feel like that is Gaijin's colossal fuck up here. It's not that they're a bad company, it's not that they're malicious by down-tearing this thing, and it's, of course there's no such thing as Russian bias. That couldn't be, that could, that couldn't be more up the shithole of conspiracy theories. But I'll tell you what, one thing that they have completely colossally fucked up is the way that they look at their balancing. And by looking at things from a bottom-up perspective, it has pretty much caused most of the balancing problems that we have in War Thunder. At least when it comes to battle rating and when it comes to economy. And for me, if that was a lot better, there would be so much more to War Thunder and people would just, in general, be a lot happier. Because if you think about it, how many times do you get a crap match and go, well, that sucks, because I was up tiered. I was up tiered again. I'm getting five up tiers in a row, and there's nothing I can do about it, except go and play something else. But anyway, ladies and gents, I think I'm going to leave it there for today. No face cam, I'll give you a face cam in a couple of days. And of course, if you would like to support the channel, there are plenty of links down in the description and plenty of options to do so. If you'd like to feed my, uh, I guess, newfound addiction to PC building and water cooling, uh, I am looking at water cooling my whole system eventually. Uh, eventually getting a nicer graphics card, of course, and doing some custom water cooling. So if you'd like to feed that addiction, definitely down in the description below, plenty of links for you to support the channel through that. And of course, if you don't have money for your for yourself or any anything to spare that you don't want to, of course, not mandatory, but a like and a comment or just something nice would be brilliant, especially in these current times. COVID is absolutely kicking Sydney's ass, so anything nice would, would go a long way. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.